Hi. I've just found this beautiful area which is just over the top of Shaftesbury Hill going from North Dorset into Wiltshire in this idyllic rustic spot called Ambrose Copse and I'm going to paint this scene before me. I'm using extra rough textured watercolour paper. I'm looking at how to lie it. It's always you've got to get yourself set up and get relaxed into it when you're painting very quickly, wet on wet. I'm using a Japanese squirrel hair mop brush, they call these, and they are so affordable. I got this. Um, yeah, in a lovely art shop and it was about eight pounds unbelievable and i have to say if you can't afford a sable hairbrush this is the next best option it's natural hair always go for natural hair as you can see i'm really soaking this very thick watercolor paper which is um 425 gsm 200 pound in weight right so I'm going to get a glaze of pale yellow all over it, because like I always do that, don't I? There we go. Very quickly, very sporadic again, leaving the light. Don't worry about the hairs so if you get a little loose hair. Just skim it off. There, you can see that, can't you? There. So first of all, that's my first backwash. It's just a splash of gamboge or Indian yellow. And again, be in control of what you're doing. Just study where it's going, where it's moving to. And I'm quite happy with that at the moment and then I can build into it. The next colour is a little bit of the blue in the sky. I just want a little bit of sky just coming in and it's, there's all these lovely clouds so we'll just leave it like that skim it through again very quick be very quick not too precise that's the best way in watercolor to look far more natural and I've just got to tip it that way there okay and then what I do a little tip is I put some vermilion into the blue Create a little bit, little bit of lovely grey. You don't need Payne's grey. As you can see, I've just put a little bit in there. Just gives a little bit of interest there. And look how quickly I did that. Now, I don't want it to look like it's raining. So I'm making sure that it's not tipping downwards, that it's just going across like that. So basically, it's just drifting there and that's my sky it's done so that's the best way to do a sky outside if you want to do a little bit of blue some white fluffy clouds and a dash of silvery grey it starts to develop you can see and there's little particles of light in between because I haven't done my washes too condensed. So we're going to build into this scene now because basically it's all about the tree canopies and I'm definitely going to come back here again in autumn, you know mid-autumn, to get the amazing colours because it will be stunning. I can't wait. And in that woodland, we've just walked round it, um, Ambrose Copse, it's full of the most amazing ash trees, oak trees, well, all sorts of trees, but particularly the ash trees. And I'm so glad because they say that in Wiltshire, the ash trees are, are declining in the landscape, but here they're thriving. So this is a really great area to study them. So here we go, I'm going to pick up my yellow again. 
I want the strength of the yellow. And the wind is picking up as well. What I'm doing is just dashing some yellow in the tops of the trees. Don't be too precise again. And again, swirl your brush. Don't just use the point. Use the side of it. You see, it's like a paddle shape, isn't it? If you keep it condensed. And I'll start mixing a bit of blue into there. Into the, the green. Greeny yellow. There, okay. So again, you've just got to work really quickly. And I don't just want it too green. I know it's quite green, but I will bring in some other colours to break up all those greens. Basically, you're just scrubbing the colours on. And then what I normally do is I make a sort of... Well, I won't be able to make a purple purple because of the vermilion. But it will be like an earthy colour. Which is already appearing in the backdrop. Because what's happened is, as you can see, is the top of the woodland has gone all muted in colour already because the sun's not on it. So I'm going to sort of just, just put a little bit of darker shades over it, just in areas. And I'm using, again, I'm working this way, coming downwards almost. Like that. Now I shall build into it again. This is how you get the muted tones. This is how you subdue things over the brighter shades. It makes it far more interesting. You can do a quick little look like that as it's wet. Not too much. We don't want to see too many trunks and things because it's sort of right in the distance. You can hardly see it. They're all like broccoli shapes, aren't they? The trees. I have a little bit of that light at the top. I quite like that. That little bit of the yellow poking its way through. And you do have to work really quickly with this technique because it dries really quickly. And also I'm letting it come down a bit, as you can see. standing out there. There. So, now I'm going to have to squeeze out some more yellow now. I always use more yellow than anything because in the trees that are in the foreground they're going to be richer in colour. So they're going to require more strength of colour. I'm still sticking. I'm, st I'm not using too much water actually because it's quite wet. I, I did, you know, it's really important. I need a bit more yellow actually. It's really important to really soak the paper, top tip, because you're working outdoors and it's been really hot and it's still very warm today, even though I'm in the shade along a little back lane. God, it's a weird, like, yeah, we're totally in the middle of nowhere. It's absolute bliss. And all, I'm only like two miles from where I live. It's, it's just, I'm, I'm incredibly lucky to be, have so many woodlands in this area. A little bit more yellow again. You see how I'm using the paint thicker? Yeah. There. There. Right. I have a little bit in there. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start, I'm going to put a bit of pale vermilion now. A little bit of that. Quite pale. To break up those greens again. Because obviously 
you need those earthy shades to break up the greens, otherwise it's just all green, isn't it? Then what I'll do is I'll put a little bit more bluey greens over the top. And again, it just brings out something else. It just makes it more interesting as you work. I'm working down the page. I'm working down the page this time. And then I might bring in a few trees. A few, I mean, tree trunks. But like very, they're very wispy. That's what I love. Because that's what really stands out in this woodland is the ash trees for me. It's a beautiful ash tree woodland. And some coming up here as well. And this is a great way of doing it while it's wet. So it's not too obvious. You only see a few coming through. And then I'll weave some colours around. There, I'll just have a little one in there maybe. I think that'll do. That's enough. Okay, and then we'll work around it now. I might use a different brush now. There okay, so this is a different brush. Just to create a bit of texture. I need to squeeze out a little bit more yellow again. Make sure I've got enough this time. And this is great. This brush I use nearly in every single painting that I do. And it's called a filbert. And um, when you buy them, they're creamy white. <laughs> This is really old and they've got a lovely long stem so you can be, you know, you can get some amazing effects with filberts and they're great for any medium. But what I like to do is sort of press and blob the colours on in, air, in different areas to get a bit of interest. You see what I'm doing? I'm using a paint again quite thick but it's still wet. It's still wet. I'm just sort of deciding, oh, I'll put a bit of dark there. So you're working in block colour almost. And you can do this in watercolour if you want to. Again, you can drag it down. And again, as you get nearer to the woodland, it gives that feeling that it's closer. And it's great because it kind of just gives you a whole new different effect over the top of the wet. There. Leave some little bits of light. Little bits, you know, it, it's great because when you press it on you can leave the light. And then you can go back over, I'll show you in a minute, and, and wet around it. I want it quite dark. I'm going yeah, to rub it now. Slightly rub it. See that? Rubbing. Mm. So there's, there's so many different ways you can use your brushes and it's finding what suits you when you're playing around. Right, now we need a bit of darker colour. Again, the darker colour to bring out the light. So I normally, you can leave this to dry and then you can wet back over as well if you're, still, if you're not sure what to do. It doesn't matter now because I've done the wet on wet bit. just want to bring out these areas.
There's so many lovely colours in there. And there's a lovely pale, ooh, sort of pale rusty colour. Bring some of that in there. Very pale. Yeah. Also I noticed in the woods the rowan berries are out. Yes, yeah, so they've got the rowan berry trees. Very tall they grow in there. Stunning. So that's why I'm adding a little bit of this. That's why I've started using the vermilion. Because that's what I'm noticing, and also the hawthorn berries are appearing as well. All of a sudden, you know, we're sort of got another 10 days, I think, of August. Autumn, you can feel even the autumn smells a little bit are starting to come already. So, there, I've worked my way all the way down. I don't really worry too much about the bottom bit, that's fine, because I probably will crop it further up. So that basically that's, that's it. Yep, I'm very happy with that.